where here I'm going to be talking about some of the exposure modes and the focusing modes. And hopefully after I do it, some of the things that are a little bit confusing might become a lot more clearer. So let me start with a single focusing point. You can get to the focusing mode by hitting the function button and then going over to here, focus area. Now you have many different choices here. I'm going to go right now to flexible spot. And when you have flexible spot, you can then use the left and right arrows to choose a different size of flexible spot. You can go medium, you can go large, or you can go small. For this example, let's just use small. And you can see it right there. Now it's kind of in the center. What does it focus on? Here's a horizontal line. Let's see how well it does. I'm going to press the shutter release button halfway. Now I'm in AFC mode. And you can tell that because of the parentheses around the green dot in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. That means it thinks it found something, but it's continuing to reevaluate the distance between the camera and the subject. So normally, conventional wisdom says that you give it some kind of contrast, and it'll do a really good job of figuring out where things are. And with horizontal contrast, it turns out the camera really has no idea. But if you give it vertical contrast, it's a completely different story. It finds it right away. Let's try that again. Horizontal is not really too sure, but if you move the line to vertical contrast, it gets it right away. Does that happen with all the focusing points? Let's move it to a second one. I'm going to use the joystick on the back. Let's uh, pick one like over here. And same test again. I'll press the shutter release button halfway. I'll give it a horizontal line and it's not really too sure what to do. I will give it a vertical line. And sure enough, it just zaps right onto it. So the moral to the story is all of the phase detect autofocus points on the camera sensor are blind to horizontal contrast. You need to have vertical contrast like this in order to make it work. Why haven't you noticed this before? Because you probably never took pictures of pure horizontal lines before. That's an easy one. You can actually change the size of that little square. Go to the function area and go to the focus area. Now, most of your other focusing choices have to do with changing the size of that little tiny focusing square. The first example we have is the flexible spot. You can go to small, medium, and large. Large, as you can see, makes it a larger square. Too, too small for you still? You can head over to the focus area and go to something even larger, like zone. Zone is like a really, really big square. It's like a whole quadrant of the viewfinder. So that's what these do, just changing the size of the autofocus area. There's a couple other choices. Center, which by the way, is exactly the same thing as the flexible spot large. The only difference is you can't move it around. What other choices are there? Well, you got something called expanded flexible spot, which is yet another size. That way it's 120% uh, you know, bigger than the other ones, but not nearly as big a zone. So you have a lot of choices for size. Some people will say too many. Now, what's this last one? Last one is called lock-on AF, and it's used for tracking subjects as they go around the frame. I'll talk about how that works in just a minute. But first, let's talk about how the camera does when it's presented with things that are close and things that are far. How does the camera choose what the subject is? So the camera actually has two heuristics. The first one is, if you had two different subjects, place two different distances apart, focus on the one that's closest. You can see that here. If that one goes away, it'll focus on whatever's next closest. Heuristic number two is ignore heuristic number one if you find a face. And I happen to have a Sears portrait special right here. Now watch what the camera does. It's going to be in focusing mode. It'll be constantly reevaluating the distance between the subject and. And there we go. Even though it's further away, it found a face, and therefore it's going to be concentrating the face. You take it away, it goes back to focusing on whatever was closest. Put it there, and it finds the face. So that's how your camera makes a choice in wide area autofocus mode. So uh, I'm going to go through the focus area menu here. As we mentioned earlier, all this does is take you through different sizes of a spot. And the very last item here is lock on AF wide. Now you can also go left and right when you're going the menu here. See the left and right arrows by the icon? If you do that, you start to see other options, which happen to coincide with the options above this one in the menu. So you have lock on AF wide, and then zone, and then 
center, flexible spot, different sizes, expanded flexible spot, and then wide again. There we are. I'm not even going to tell it anything. I'm just going to press the shutter release button down halfway, and you can see the double green squares around the face. That means I found the subject. I'm going to keep tracking it, even as it goes across the screen, left, right, up, down. No manual step for registering your subject is necessary. It's a very handy thing. And again, I keep this as my standard mode all the time. And if I ever, if the camera ever makes a bad choice, then I can quickly override it. But as you can see, my philosophy is let the camera do its awesome automation stuff as much as it can. And then just make sure you can override it quickly in case it guesses badly.